Hi everyone and welcome to a new video about a magnetic circuit example. This is our example number two. In this example we will discuss a more complicated situation of a magnetic circuit. So let's look at our problem. We have the following system given magnetic system. It is 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters and it has a thickness of the score of 4 centimeters. And the air gap in this case, we have now an air gap, it has a length of 0.5 centimeters. So this distance is 5 centimeters. Now, in addition, we have the L1 to L5, and that represents the mean path length, and that will be discussed later to calculate the required values. The number of turns of this coil here is 400, so that's the cap letter N, and we have also the relative permeability of our core material, which is 1000 here. Okay, what is required? What is the actual the calculation? We need to calculate the required current to establish a magnetic flux density in this gap of 0.75 Tesla. So we need to apply, of course, a source here and that will then uh, create a current in this system. But that current needs to be calculated, so we need to go back what we require to have a magnetic flux density in the air gap of 0.75 Teslas. Okay, that's the situation. Okay, so outside we assume it is vacuum and inside we have a core material with this permeability value. Okay, let's look at the solutions. How do we start? Okay, we need a current, so we need also a equation or expression which has the current in it. So if I look at the formulas for current, the current is then given by this expression in this magnetic system. So the magnetomotive force MMF is equal to n number of turns times the current. But this formula is not really a handy starting point because we have now two unknowns. The F is unknown and also the I is unknown. So we cannot continue with this expression. So in addition we need more. So let's look at also another formula which has also that magnetomotive force in it, which is given by this, which, which is related to the flux and also the reluctance. Now we can now use these two equations to combine and to get a new well, uh, equation. Now before we move on, let's also summarize what we have here. We have the turns ratio again, the current, the flux, magnetic flux and also the magnetomotive force and also our reluctance. So these are all here in these two expressions. If I now combine these two formulas and make a new one, just equate two F's, then I have Ni is equal to phi times R. If I now want, of course, my current, I can now equate the expression such that I have I is equal to the rest of the parameters, which is then given in this formula. So I have now an expression of I in terms of phi, the reluctance, and also the turns, number of turns. I know the number of turns, that's just 400, so I can of course substitute already here, but I don't know the phi and also don't know the reluctance. That means I really need to calculate these two unknown values. And if I know that, then the job is finished. So let's first look at, for example, the flux. Magnetic flux. Magnetic flux is also given by this expression, which is then the magnetic flux density times the area actually of that situation where we're interested in. Now, since the magnetic flux here in this core material and also in the gap is our exact same in a series combination, we can say, let's use the magnetic flux density of the gap, which is given, and then also the area of this gap, which can be calculated using this geometry, and then we have our flux. Now, once we have a flux, we can then continue with the next parameters. Okay, let's also look at the 2D diagram of this situation. What we have, of course, is 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters, and this distance is 2 centimeters, which is also shown here, and this is also valid here. What we also have is, of course, fringing. So we need to consider that also, this is the gap, which is 0.5 centimeters, and then the core thickness is 4 centimeters. So, if we take into account the fringing, which is of course uh, give you a more accurate result, then we can use the following approximation for that. That will give you a more accurate result. What we do, we don't do now the two centimeters by four centimeters as the area. Now we also take that distance of this gap into account and add that to each 
dimension so we can say 0.024 meters plus the L gap times the the uh, the core thickness and also add to that also the L gap if we do that we can then write the following expression 0.04 for 4 centimeters for our thickness core thickness and also plus the L gap now if you work it out you will get this area for the gap it is just not 0.02 times the 0.04 but it's also this addition that's what we have here if I now substitute this and also use the 0.75 Tesla given in this expression you know in our example we have this so it is 4.88 times 10 to the power minus 4 weavers that's the flux and that will also be valid for all core material also for this system now let's also look at the reluctances because the reluctance is also really important and we can now use from this and set up our electric circuit diagram so from the magnetic circuit to electric circuit we have now here the source which is then a magnetomotive source we have the r1 which represent actually this l1 r2 which is then the representation for this l2 the path r3 which is then the representation for this l3 we have the gap which is then this rg and we have also the r4 which is for this path and also the r5 which is then for this path of course we can simplify this and we don't need to work with the separate uh, resistors but for the r1 r2 r3 and r4 and r5 so the four resistors or reluctances we can take them into account as one reluctance and that we will call just r core so we can say the total reluctance is the r core plus the r gap but r core is on its own is actually a summation of these four reluctances that's more easy to work with so we can just take the full mean path length here and don't need to consider actually separate elements okay what's the calculation and how do we work out the reluctances reluctances formula is shown here so it is the length of that path divided by the relative permeability and also the vacuum permeability and also the core area now we know also the gap which is in in fact a similar one so you use the path length or the length of that gap divided by in this case just the vacuum permeability because there is no relative permeability in vacuum there's just one and we have also the gap cross-sectional area now in here of course we have some values again r is just reluctance so it is just specific for the gap or the core we have the length of the core we have also the a core which is then specific for our area here and also the gap we have also of course the l gap which is already given and the relative permeability and also the vacuum permeability and we will use this value okay let's then look at the l core first the l of the core is then the summation of these five lines here so five l values we can also write that down in a different form you can also say okay this four times l1 actually this and then just subtract this part because it is one two three four that's actually full circle but of course i need to get this part of the equation out in order to get the correct l core so this is actually also the correct formula and it's also easier in order to of course have the path length accurate l1 i need to of course also subtract from this 10 centimeters two centimeters why because if i look at the path length which is the average distance actually from this point to that that's actually one centimeter down and then one centimeter up so i have actually a distance here of eight centimeters so it is 10 centimeters minus two that's why we have here 0.08 instead of 0.10 so that's the four times that 0.08 minus this l gap and i have 0.315 meters so i will use this that's actually what we get here now also a core so it's actually the area of the core which is then given by this formula which is very straightforward just the 0.02 times this thickness of the core which is actually this value and it's 8 times 10 to minus 4 square meters now we have now necessary values in order to calculate the r core the rectus of the core substitute the values you will have this reluctance this is just for the core in a similar form we can do that for the gap we already know the gap area the cross-sectional area we also know the distance or the 
with the length of this uh, gap so we can just substitute the values and we have now this value here so we have now two reluctances we can combine them to get a total reactance then we have the following that is what we have here so this r is then the this two combined together and we have now 3.85 times 10 to the power 6 ampere turns per weber that's now the result for our total reluctance why do we need this because we already know that it is required here so once i know the phi which is the flux magnetic flux and also the reluctance total reluctance i can of course then calculate just right away the current and i'm almost done so i can say then we have the following situation again repeat the formula just substitute the values 8.44 times 10 to the power minus 4 which is then here times what we have here now divided by the number of turns which is in our coil and i have then the current required current which is then 8.12 amperes so by applying here a current or ma uh, make sure that you have a current flow of 8.12 amperes here you will have in this gap a magnetic flux density of 0.75 tesla that's for this for example of course if you have any questions as always you can point it out in the comment section i will try to answer them as soon as possible if you of course want a more uh, introductory example please look at the example number one about this magnetic circuits and i will discuss the these topics there in more detail and also a little bit in an intro level thanks again and see you next time in another example take care